Hey, good morning. This is Mr. Maestas, and I am here talking to you today about chi-squared GOF. GOF stands for goodness of fit, all right? So GOF, um, you'll see this in a calculator, um, but this stands for goodness of fit. Right, and I'll explain why it's called goodness of fit in just a second through my example. So um, I'm going to go through an example and identify the key things that you need to do for a chi-squared goodness of fit test. May, and a little bit about how it's different from other tests, okay? So here's my, my problem. At a certain school district, the transportation department has determined 22% of students walk or ride a bike, 28% get a ride from parents, 11% take their own personal vehicle like a car, 39% use public transportation um, or a district-provided bus. Now, another school, one of the high schools, um, they go out and they find out exactly what their students do um, to get to school. They figured out these numbers, and I'll let you read that through. And the question here, is there evidence that the high school is consistent with the district's proportions? Now, I want you to think about this real quick. If you think about the ones that we've done so far, we've only done either where we take a pro one proportion and we compare it to a true proportion, or we've taken two samples and compare them to each other. This is a very different case. We've got one, two, three, four proportions, and we're comparing four different things here to each of these proportions. So we actually got more things that we have to take take in consideration, right? We almost have, um, we really have four categories. We have uh, walk, ride, get a ride from parents. I'm sorry, walk, bike, get a ride from parents. So we have, um, I'm gonna just label these right here. We have uh, walk, ride. We have get a ride from parents. We have, um, own personal vehicle, so I'll just write car. And we also have, um, you know, district transportation, a bus, right? So we have four categories, and we're comparing to see if these guys here, this high school, matches with what we have for all four categories. So we're going to have a different type of test here. Now notice here, goodness of fit. It means how well do these numbers fit what we expect them to be. So really what we're doing is we're comparing our observed amounts with our expected amounts. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a little table, and in my little table, I'm gonna write my, um, oh, okay, oof. Um, I'm gonna write my observed first, and then I'm gonna write my expected next. Okay, so um, the way I do that, is I'm just going to draw these lines a little bit better here. Um, forgive me if it looks kind of, you know, these lines are thicker, um, but I just wanted to be a little straighter here, okay? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to look at the information given. Um, so what is the observed amount? The observed amount is the amount that will uh, we get when we look at what we're doing. Like, what, what did we take? What information did we take that we're comparing to the, um, the big guys, the expected, the ones we already have, um, or in this case, by the district? So I'm going to go write, write down my observed numbers, which is um, uh, 506. This was supposed to be green. Sorry, guys. Uh, 518, 208, 910. I'm going to add those together, and I'm going to get 2,142. And there's my total. Now, I have to figure out my expected values. My expected values are going to be uh, out of this 2,142, what would I expect me to have for walk and ride if, in fact, we did match? So if we did, in fact, match, if 22% of 2,142 students were, in fact, going by walking or riding, what would this number have to be? Okay, so let's go and, and figure that. And the way we feel is we just do 22% of 2142, which is uh, 0.22 um, times 2142. And when I do that, I'm going to round off on these. So 471. I want to have all my values here to be whole numbers. Okay. So I'm going to do that for each one of these. 28% is going to give me about 600. And then 11% uh, is going to give me about 235. And then here, uh, I want to make sure that this total is um, 2,142, okay? These got to match up. So I don't necessarily need to take 39% of this because I want these to add up 
to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these numbers, add them up, and subtract by 2142 to get my last number here. I know it seems like, wait a minute, can you do that? Yes, you can, because we want these to add up to the totals. These have to match for you to be able to do the chi-square test, all right? Okay, so we're going to go through um, our mechanics in just a second, but I want to go through all the things that you need to make sure that you do in a chi-square test. So a chi-square test is just like any other hypothesis test we've done. We need to have our hypothesis, our conditions for inference, our mechanics, which is our table's going to get to that in just a second, and then our conclusion. Now, in our mechanics section, um, you know, a lot of times we'll be able to use a, a, a some sort of technology, uh, but I'm going to show you right now how to calculate the chi-squared statistics, so that way at least you have that. Um, but most of the time, all you got to do is enter it in, and I'll show you a few places. What I might do is in the next video, I might cut this video in two pieces. So here's like kind of all the format and work that you need to do. And then um, in the next video, I'll show you just plugging this stuff into some calculators or some other forms of technology to find the, uh, the p-value. So let's first uh, start with our hypothesis. So our null hypothesis. So we got to remember our null is like what are not exactly what are we trying to prove, but um, what would mean um, no change, right? Our null hypothesis is about no change. There's nothing uh, unusual about our numbers. So if there were no change, what would we expect? We would expect our numbers to be pretty much exactly like the proportions that the district provides. There's consistency. There's no change. So um, for chi-square, I need to write this in complete sentences. So I'm going to write this as the high school uh, proportions. are consistent with the district, right? There's no change. I wouldn't expect anything to be different um, for my null hypothesis. My alternative hypothesis means that there is some differences, right? So the high school proportions are not consistent. Like there's some they're just not the same as we would expect them to be given the district's pr pr proportions. Let me see if I can write district here. Okay, so there are my null and alternative hypothesis. Now, let me get to my um, conditions. Now, my conditions are really just the same as all my other conditions, except the last one, of course, does change. So my first one, I'm just going to, I'm not going to write these all out in context because you should be able to do that already, okay? So number one is random. Were, um, uh, was my high school taken randomly? Were these people taken randomly? Um, two, um, are my, is my data less than 10% of all, you know, less than 10%, um, ten, this is less than 10% of all the kids in the district, right? Um, finally, third, you know, obviously we want to have independence within those, so sometimes we, we add this independence condition, depending on who your professor or teacher is. Um, but the fourth one, which is the most important one, is called, um, actually there's, there's, a, there's a, another one here. Um, so we have uh, um, our data are in counts. Okay, so um, are these counted data? And you don't want to have percentages in here. You want actual counted numbers of what you have for each of these categories. The last one, which is the most important one here, that's all that's that's usually different, is the expected values must be greater than or equal to five. Okay? So what we want to make sure is that our expected values here are all going to be greater than five because if they're not greater than five then we're not going to have enough um, we're not going to have enough information to do our chi-squared test so we're going to need to make sure that these are greater than five and clearly they are um, if they are not what i recommend is taking two groups adding them together and make them one group so that you have an expected value grade. and can we do this yes we can it just means that you know these two groups are going to be matched together okay so our conditions are good we're going to go to our mechanics so here is how we calculate the chi-squared statistic. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make myself a little table. And in my little table, I have to, I'm going to look for the chi-squared statistic. The first thing I have to do is subtract the observed minus the expected. All right, so I'm going to subtract these numbers here. 
500 minus, 506 minus 471 is going to be 35. It's okay if I get negatives, um, and I'll show you why in just a second. So I'm just going to fill this in here. When subtracting each one, you don't need to do the total. All right, your next, your next, um, your next one here is going to be, okay, put a line here. Um, your next one is going to be squaring those. So we're going to square those. Okay, so we're going to take our differences and we're going to square them. So 35 squared, negative 82 squared. This is going to end up even positive, right? Square this guy, square this guy. Okay, once I square them, I'm going to divide all of those by my expected. Okay, so I'm going to take 1225 divided by 471 and I'm going to get 2.6. This one divided by 600, 11.2. 729 divided by 235, 3.1. And then uh, this 5476 divided by 836 and get 6.55. And if I add all of those up together, O minus E squared over E, that is going to be equal to chi squared. All right, so I'm going to add all these guys up together. This plus this plus this plus this, and I'm going to get 20, about 23.45. This right here is my chi-squared statistic, okay? So this is my test statistic, which is chi-squared. Now, this is my mechanics um, to find chi-squared. What I need to do is I need to find my p-value. And my p-value is uh, when chi-squared is greater than 23.45. Okay, and in order to do this, I need to use a chi-square table. So I'm going to go to my chi-square table, which is usually in the back of a book. And I've got a chi-square table here. Um, oh, before I do that, I need to have degrees of freedom. So let me go back here. I need to know how what my degrees of freedom are. So my degrees of freedom, degrees of freedom, is the number of categories minus one. Categories minus one. So one, two, three, four categories, minus one is three. So I've got three degrees of freedom. So when I go to my, uh, my table here, let me zoom in here. I've got three degrees of freedom right here. And what is my alpha level? See these num little numbers on the bottom? Those are my alpha levels, okay? See, it says alpha. So I'm going to take an alpha level of 0.05 because I didn't really specify, and I'm going to go with three degrees of freedom and my chi-squared, my maximum chi-squared, my maximum chi-squared to be um, uh, um, in, not significant is going to be 7.8. So over here in my work, what I would say is, um, oops, is since my chi-squared value, since my chi-squared value is greater than is greater than 7.8 my p-value is going to be less than 0 0.05 which is my alpha level and then I can write my conclusion um, but let's say we really want our p-value um, then we can use some technology to find that probably a, a, a TI Inspire which I'll show you in the next video it'll be very short I'll show you how to plug these stuff in okay so um, let me move this out of the way so I can write my conclusion. All right, so here's my conclusion. Since my chi-squared of 23.45 is greater than 7.8, which is my maximum chi-squared, we reject the null hypothesis. There is evidence that the high school is not consistent with the district's proportions. The district's transportation proportions. Okay, 
So there you go, guys. Um, this is a chi-squared test for goodness of fit.